Hi, everybody. Welcome to the PJ's cast. Uh, it is your this time host, Jimmy, uh, alongside my good pal Schmitty and our guest today, Colby Guy. Colby, how you feeling today, man? How's it going? Going good, man. Going good. Uh, how about you guys? Uh, sure, I think you put it pretty well, Dylan. Same shit, different day. I'm about to watch the Hawks get their uh, cheeks clapped in a couple <laughs> hours or so, so that should be fun. Uh, but uh, I just I kind of want to get into things. Uh, Colby, um, you're writing for the, uh, I believe, the uh, Palm Beach Post Sports and uh, Florida Hockey Now. You're doing this at the age of 19 years old. You're going on Zoom calls with the Panthers. Man, how's it feel? Like, what's it like at this age to be doing all this? I turned 20 in October, actually, but <laughs> you were 19. You were 19, I guess. Okay. But uh, it's, it's great. It's great. I actually haven't announced the Palm Beach Post gig yet. I just put it in my bio. But uh, starting Monday, the Post is going to get an article a week from me. But, but my, my main place of work is Florida Hockey now. And it's, it's, it's been great. Um, it's been great being around the team. It's quite the experience. I would imagine, yeah. I was um, I was just a little curious as to like since you said you're like around the team this year and stuff. Have you seen like a renaissance of the fan base at all? Because at least from the games I've went to, it seems like over the last few years they're starting to get more fans. But I feel like this year it might have just like you know jump started that a little more <laughs> for some random reason. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, like I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah, I I can't pinpoint why, but I mean. It seems like the fans really have started to take their own identity and develop a personality there. Like, you see some of those games, you hear the fans being like, we want 10, we want 10. Like, those types <laughs> of things are hilarious. I'm just sitting back there. And, like, I remember they were playing Columbus, and they scored a couple goals there early, and the fans were already on the whole we want 10 wave, like, four minutes into the first period i'm sitting there like what's going on man i mean they ended up scoring nine there in that game i'm like yeah (laughs) only nine only nine damn whatever yeah mackenzie weger actually had a breakaway coming out of the penalty box (laughs) to try to get 10 but he got stopped there he he, we were talking to him after the game he felt really bad about that but i mean (laughs) they'll, they'll get them 10 goals eventually yeah, sorry we couldn't get you 10 goals. Sorry, guys. You know, yeah. don't mean to spoil you too much. At we all. only average like five and a half goals a game. Like, hold on. <laughs> but, um, Holy hell. like, one thing I've realized with this team, at least, is it's like, like, I, I was telling Jimmy, I was just looking at the stat sheet, and it, it, it almost seems like everyone's performing to what they should be. And that's the sort of thing that, that's something that's so rare at the team. Obviously, Tampa does it all the time. So, like, everyone kind of bats a blind eye to it. But, I mean, you look at Florida, they're probably four. They can probably be five lines deep if they wanted to, in theory, which is just so useful to have come playoff time. Um, I was just wondering, like, who do you think uh, taking maybe the biggest step on the team this year to allow that to happen where they have that kind of roster depth? One of the most underrated guys on this team has to be Mason Marchman. I mean, coming into this season, he only had 10 points as his career high. And then, like now, in a seventeen in, in a seven game stretch, the guy has fifteen points, nine goals, <laughs> six assists for fifteen points in his yeah, last yeah. seven games, and that includes a six point game and a hat trick. So, I mean, the the guy is just on a heater, and it, he's really found chemistry with Anton Lundell and Sam Reinhart. That line really works well together. But I mean, Marchman, a guy who's really strong in the puck. He, he can make plays. He can do whatever. And playing with these guys that he found chemistry with, he's really brought out that that good quality NHL player with him. And that's just the third line there, playing like a, a first line on some teams. So yeah, ridiculous. seriously. To have a guy, what was it, was it 15 points in seven games? Yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. Like, that's not human. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And, like – one thing that I feel like doesn't get talked about nearly enough, you just mentioned it. Anton Lindell should be in the Calder conversation with what he's doing right now. He's on like a 60 point pace and no one's talking about it. It's yeah. And not only that, he's playing big time penalty kill minutes. He's not getting the power play minutes that some of these guys who have more points than him have. So they're getting more of their points on the power play. Anton Lindell is doing this all five on five. He has line mates he's comfortable with, but then he steps up in those big defensive situations. And I think that's one thing to look at as well. But the one guy I will say I'll give props to in that conversation is Mo, uh, Mo Sider. He's doing this as a defenseman, 
But Lundell should get the props too. Oh, 100 percent At least be in the conversation, you know, like yeah, the fact no that Michael Bunting's in the conversation, five. but not oh, Anton Lundell is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we talked about this. I'm a Leafs fan, but I uh, I swear to God, if Michael Bunting is top three, I I, I don't know. Listen, Jimmy, gonna have no to... Mason Marchment. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't care about the Calder trophy. You know that? I just don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Um, but uh, I want to ask uh, Colby. You know, we all know the wagon the Panthers are this season. You know, we know they're great. We know what they are. We know that they're going to be a cup contender. We know that they are definitely top three in that conversation. Um, my question is, do you think that there's a piece that they need to add at the deadline? You know, even we look at the Blackhawks teams a years past when they were running a dynasty, they always need something at the deadline and, you know, they usually got it. But what do you think the Panthers need this season? I think they really need that defenseman who can move the puck and be the quarterback at the power play. I mean, you watch the, how the Panthers' power play operates. They use Aaron Ekblad as their power play quarterback, and that, that's just not the role he's fit to play. He's more of that puck-shooting defenseman. You get him the puck, he shoots it. But if you ask him to kind of patrol the power play and move the puck like that, that's just not his game. So the way they have it operating, the puck moves pretty slowly because they don't really have that natural guy that can really upstart the power play. And, I mean, it worked at some times when they were playing teams that they can take advantage of and get shots off against. But you see them against teams like Carolina that are very aggressive in blocking those passing lanes. You're going to need that guy who can move the puck. So – in my opinion, you're going to want to look at a guy like Mark Giordano or a guy like John Klingberg who can really upstart the power play there and get things moving. Oh, yeah. I love the idea of John Klingberg. As soon as you said puck movie defense, but that's the first guy who came to my mind. I was like, man, they add Klingberg to that defense. That's that's about as loaded as you can get on the right side, I feel like. I know Weger plays left side, but like to have that many quality right-handed defensemen on your team and then like Gudis. I mean, obviously Gudis does what he does. And like, that's always great. Um, I, you know, like as a Blackhawks podcast, we both just kind of shake our heads looking at Forsling and Carlson because we knew they were good. And I, I mean, at least from my, what I can tell, Forsling's really stepped into that top four well, role really well. Um, I had a question just um, obviously Sergei Bobrovsky has been, has had kind of a renaissance here. It's kind of like the thing Bob loves to do. Once every three or four years, he has that quality season. Um, what are your thoughts on Spencer Knight this year, though? Because I know he's kind of been up and down a little bit, so it's just curious. Yeah, the way Sergei Bobrovsky has been playing, he hasn't had much of a chance to get into NHL games because Bobrovsky's really taken over this season. But they've made the decision to send Knight down to Charlotte to get him some games. And, I mean, as a 20-year-old, no matter what you're playing NHL or AHL, it's impressive that the guy is even getting NHL starts and he hasn't looked entirely bad. I mean, and in, in some of the starts he's had, there have been a couple where he's let up a bunch of goals and it's just because of the way the team plays in front of him. He, sometimes they get bad bounces when he's in that. He, he's been really unlucky in the NHL this season, but he's had a really good stretch in Charlotte as well. So there's no reason to get, discouraged about him he's only 20 years old and usually goalies don't really hit their prime until like 26 so the fact that he's getting you quality nhl starts at times he's able to win you some games and he's showing promise in charlotte there's no reason to be worried and especially now that sergey bobrovsky is kind of playing to his potential you don't necessarily need spencer knight to be the guy right now you know sergey bobrovsky is actually playing to the potential of the contract he signed He's playing like a guy who can lead you to a cup if you need him to. And it's all working out. Oh, yeah. That's that's probably the best way you can describe it. Everything Everything's clicking right now. And, I mean, I, I would say the Sam Reinhardt trade was a home run. Clearly, we were talking. We were just talking about the third line earlier. He's been incredible. Uh, Sam Bennett. <laughs> on their third line is just gross. Right? <laughs> Sam Bennett it's hasn't nuts. skipped a beat. Like, it's no. – I had, hopefully he can, you know, keep his head screwed on straight in the playoffs because he was such a huge piece of that lightning series. And if he played, I feel like they win. But it's like the Kadri thing. It's got to got to be there to play. But um, I, I guess since like I, it's the Florida's probably going to be one through three in the Atlantic, most likely uh, out of the matchups that could be possibilities. Who do you think the Panthers maybe stack up best against? That would be an interesting question. And I mean, to me, 
I think out of all those wild card contender teams, I think probably one of the better matchups they'd have is against Washington. They're a team that doesn't necessarily have the goaltending. I mean, we've heard them in the rumors for Flurry. Maybe that's something that materializes. Or, and then also, they, they, their team hasn't necessarily played together all season. They've had a lot of injuries, a lot of guys coming in and out of the lineup. Their defense kind of could use some more work as well. So you have a team with a lot of offense, like the Panthers, going against a team like Washington that kind of has some of those issues. Maybe that's a team that they can kind of take advantage and get their weaknesses out on. But, I mean, Toronto is another one of those teams where we don't necessarily know what we're going to get from them when it comes playoff time because they don't necessarily have those guys who get out there during the playoffs. I mean, maybe some of these trades they're making to add guys, like they just added Ryan Dezingle and Ilya Labushkin. I mean, I, yeah, the defense is saved. Far... Nothing to worry about anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how far they moved the needle. But if they look for depth that can step up and also, I mean, play in those physical grinded out games because their team is kind of built for those finesse games when the Panthers do have guys who can step up in physical games. We saw that the last two nights. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I think either one of those. Oh, man. I, 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 when I watched that Carolina game and I just saw it, that's, that's two, that's two of the best teams in the league going blow for blow with each other and – and it's nice to see that um, one thing that I picked up when I watched that game was that the Panthers have the sandpaper to counter other teams as sandpaper. And I feel like that's something that wasn't there in the previous years. Like I saw Sveshnikov have that dirty hit or like just that hit into the boards. And then immediately you got Lomberg and Hornquist in their face. And like, you got all these guys who are just in root goodest. You got all these guys who are ready to stand up for the teammates. And that's something that you need in the playoffs when you have all this skill and it allows the skill to, you know, generate. So I'm really excited to see what Florida does, honestly, because they've, they've been just such a hoop to watch this year. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, I mean, one guy that's all behind it, and we mentioned him before, but Radko Gudis, he's really stepped up, and he, he's less dirty than he was earlier on in his career. Yeah, he still has that physical touch. He'll hit some guys. He'll step up for his teammates. He, he's a really popular guy in the room, too. He brings a lot of energy there. So he's a guy that really helps – bring that sandpaper, bring a positive morale to the room, and he's a big leader on the team. And th those are the type of guys that really help you through the playoffs as well. 100%, man, 100%. And then I, one note that I wanted to ask, just because um, I feel like it's a story that isn't getting talked about nearly enough. Andrew Burnett stepping in as the interim head coach, and this team not only not skipping a beat, but maybe to get taking a step forward. I feel like that needs to get talked about way more. And I think – I think Andrew Burnett should be in the Jack Adams conversation for what he's doing right now. He, he got thrown into a situation that he probably was not expecting to be in that season. And that team has not skipped the beat. And I just think that's this hats off to the coaching staff because they have been incredible this season. Yeah. Burnett had a lot of good relationships with the guys. He was one of the more popular assistant coaches there. So when everything happened with Quenville, they knew that he was the guy to take over. And from there, he was able to rally the troops together. I mean, I, it, it was a very hard thing for those guys in the locker room to go through, like especially like just finding that out about someone you trusted for the last few years there and someone who you kind of looked up to. Like talking with some of the guys after what happened, they didn't know what, how to feel about it. And they were all feeling down. But Burnett really got the guys together. He, he, he knew they had the potential to do this in them. So he was able to rally them together, get the morale back up, and they were able to keep on churning as if not much happened, not much changed. And he, he's really taken that identity. He, um, he knew the system they had in place already, and they didn't want to change the system. So he, he coached them with that system the way they were comfortable with, and it, it worked out. You gotta love it. You gotta love just that that idea of just he doesn't want to come in and force his own system. He says, "All right, I know what these guys want to run. I'm just gonna try to maximize the way they run that system." And like I said, it looks like it's working to a T. So 
it's just yeah. exciting. It's exciting to watch. <laughs> yeah, and the good thing with Brunette was that he was around Quenville for a few years. I know he had an assistant job in Chicago. He moved on to Florida with him. So he, he the way he coached, the system was really what he was learning. So really, he 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 knew that system better than most other people. So he knew not to really touch anything too much to where it changes things, and it ended up working out. All right, so Colby, uh, we're about to finish up on this, but uh, a couple questions before we go. First one, uh, first one all involving tonight's game. What are we thinking? What are our predictions? Let's go with a uh, four to two victory for the That's Panthers. That's so kind. That's, That's generous. So of you. kind. <laughs> I think the Panthers are getting at least five today. Take Unless Flurry's in his on his A game man. again, then that's a different story. But I, I'm expect I'm expecting some big saves from Flurry. He's still been good this season. But oh, yeah. insane last game. Well, last game was maybe his best of the year. It was insane. Yeah. And guess what? The Hawks couldn't muster up a fucking goal. So <laughs> yep. that's why you shouldn't <laughs> oh, say 14. It's a blast. And the uh most important question, uh pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. As long oh, as it's not no. a good New York slice. Oh, yeah, if I see that's pineapple fair. on a New York that's slice, fair. that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, if I'm getting Domino's, I'll get pineapple on pizza. If it's a no good what? place, then no. I agree no. with that, honestly. Because, like, if it's a nice pizza, just keep that fruit away. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> it's got all those good ingredients. Don't even fucking get it here. Honestly. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're if you're ordering, like, Domino's or Papa John's, whatever, if that's the only thing that's open, I'll have some fun. Put some pineapple on the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> what a, this is maybe the most riveting conversation of the podcast it's always about the pizza man Come it's on, always man. about the pineapple and the pizza man That's bro it's the, 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 it's the one that gets for. the people going like i said it's pineapple <laughs> I, I, look, i'm very passionate about this topic <laughs> <laughs> all right well colby thank you so much for coming on man so glad we could have you and uh keep trucking on man you're doing great all right keep it up guys have a good one you too man